Okay, um, I just wanted to get started here with uh, an example of parameterizing a line and show some different uh, things that we haven't talked in class about yet, but which um, would be useful to you in understanding this a little bit better. So let's say we have a line parameterized by the vector valued function given here. R of t is 2 plus ti plus 3 minus 2tj plus 5 plus 4tk. Okay, as you may remember, uh, the first component, the i component, is your x. So this would be equivalent to x equals 2 plus t. Uh, the second component, the j component, is your y. So here we have y equals 3 minus 2t. And the k component is your z coordinate. So we have z equals 5 plus 4t. So these would be the parametric equations of the line given or traced out by this vector valued function. Now, over here, using the, the parametric uh, equations of the line, you can tell me the direction vector of the line. Uh, the direction vector of the line would be v equals, and they can look at the coefficients here of t, and you get i, 1i minus 2j plus 4k as the direction vector of this line. Now, it's sort of interesting that in this case, because of the fact that we have this sort of constant uh, um, uh, rate of speed as we're, we're moving, that if you determine the velocity vector, v of t, for this function, which we, of course, know is r prime of t, we end up with the derivative of t plus t is 1, so we get just i, and then the derivative of 3 minus 2t is a minus 2j, and the derivative of 5 plus 4t uh, is 4, so plus 4k. And if you compare this with what we had for our direction vector of the line, it turns out in this case, because of our constant speed, that we end up with the same thing. Now, I want you to be sure to understand that this does not mean that we always have this to be true. In order to travel along a line, we do not have to have constant speed. Therefore, we do not necessarily get a direction vector as the velocity of the object moving along a line every time. But of course, it would be what we do with the sort of standard approach we've had to parameterizing a line that we see here. All right, so what's the speed in this case? We already have said here that it's a constant velocity, so we can expect the speed to be constant as well. Now, speed of t would here equal the magnitude of the velocity vector, which since it's constant, won't even be a function of t, I suppose. It's just a constant function. So here you have 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 4 squared, which 1 plus 4 plus 16, or the square root of 21. Now, if the units, as we can see at the bottom here, on the x, y, and z axes are given in centimeters, and the time is given in seconds, then the speed of the motion along this line would be the square root of 21 centimeters per second. And so that's sort of an interesting piece of information. It has to do with the magnitude of the velocity vector when it's a constant, like it is here, constant speed. All right, well, what I want to look at next is actually the applet. So let's go jump to the applet here. OK, so now, when we're in the applet, um, I've already entered this uh, in the space curve. But of course, to get to a space curve, you can hit the graph menu and then go down to add a space curve, as we see right here. So once we're in there, we can see we put 2 plus t for our first component, 3 minus 2t for our y component, and the z equals 5 plus 4t. Going from negative 10 to 10 is fine here. Um, we've got 100 steps. We don't really need that many, but that will be fine. Okay, if we trace this at 0, we can see we're at the point 2, 3, 5 at t equals 0. You can see very small print here, r of 0 is 2, 3, 5. And then, of course, we can animate motion along this line. And we can see the motion is basically constant, constant speed as we move along the line. All right. So we just mentioned that the line goes through the point 2, 3, 5 at t equals 0. Um, so the 
parameterization of this line given in either the equations over here or the vector value function up above shows that we go through the point 2, 3, 5 when t is 0. We find, uh, I guess you could say r of 0 is equal to um, 2i plus 3j plus 5k Okay, that is the line goes through the point two three five when t equals zero. So if I wanted a parameterization of the same line that passes through the point 235 when t equals 6 seconds, that is, I want r of 6 t equal 2i plus 3j minus, actually, plus 5k. How would we do that? We essentially want to translate the motion by 6 seconds so that instead of being at the point 235 when t equals 0, the object is at the point 235 when t equals 6 seconds. So if we want to have r of 6 be 235 instead of r of 0 be 235, as we see up above in our original vector valued function, uh, we somehow have to shift the value of t back to 0 when t is 6 seconds. Now, how do you make uh, the input go back by 6 seconds? Uh, instead of being 6, we want it to end up being a 0 right here. Well, as you might guess, what we're going to do is we will replace t with t minus 6 in r to get r of t, a new r of t, equal 2 plus t minus 6 i plus 3 minus 2 times t minus 6 j plus 5 plus 4 times t minus 6, k. Now let's just try this out. If we put 6 into this function, let's see what we get. Um, we get 2 plus 6 minus 6, i. 6 minus 6 is going to be 0. That will give us 2i. Second component, we get 3 minus 2 times 6 minus 6 j. That's going to be a 0 term, so we end up with plus 3j plus 5 plus 4 times 6 minus 6 k. And again, 6 minus 6 is 0, so that term drops out. We get plus 5k. So the object will be at the point 2, 3, 5 when t equals 6 seconds. All right, well, let's go ahead and take a look at this in the applet and see what that looks like. I'm going to open a new window. and enter this function here. All right, I'm going to put this one over here now that I've entered it. And I'm going to hide the original one. And we can now see that the other line is pretty much right on top of where the other the first line was. Let's make this a constant primary color as well. It happens to be the same color here. If we animate this one, we'll see the motion is constant again. But what we're curious about is what happens at 6. So we're going to enter a 6 there instead of the 10. And 
click graph and let's see when we do that we see that the value of 235 is indeed gotten by R of 6 over here to the left so we end up with where we're supposed to be at time t equals 6 okay at time t equals 0 of course we're somewhere else we're at negative 4, 15, negative 19 at t equals 0 okay so at t equals 6 I guess we can go right up to it now we are at 235 and so that's exactly what we wanted to see if we animate this again it's the same basic idea it's going along the same line as before okay if we put this line in there again it will look like the same line it's just got two vectors on it same line we're just using different parameterizations if we animate along this one the same line if I animate this one again it's the same line it's just uh, really a different part of it they stop a little bit shy of the other because you've shifted it by six seconds. So it ends sooner, it looks like, than the other one does in terms of um, what you end up with for your values of t here. All right, let's go back. We just came up with our vector valued function here for shifting the motion to have it go through a certain point when t equals six. And um, if you take a look at this and take its, take its derivative, find the velocity, note that here v of t is still the same thing. If you take the derivative, it's still going to be a 1i. Here it's a minus 2j, and the last component is a 4k. So we get the same velocity, same constant speed as before. Uh, it's just that we've shifted our uh, time so that we can go through a certain point at time t equals 6. Same direction vector as well, of course. All right, motion along a line does not need to have a constant speed. So we talked about this briefly before, but um, we can parameterize this line or this path along this line in many different ways. Let's give you an example. One example would be r of t equals 2 plus t cubed i plus 3 minus 2 t cubed j plus 5 plus 4 t cubed k. Now all we've done is replace t with t cubed in each place. And as long as you replace t with the same function of t everywhere in the vector valued function, you will trace out at least part of the same path. Okay, it doesn't necessarily end up always covering the whole thing, although here using t cubed, since it does have the, a range of negative infinity to infinity, it will cover the whole, whole line. So let's go ahead and um, consider how this is going to work. Um, let's go ahead and find the velocity. So v of t, in this case, is going to be equal to 3 t squared i minus 6 t squared j plus 12 t squared k. Clearly not constant. Um, it doesn't have to be that the fact, the fact that uh, this is not the, equal to the direction vector is okay, uh, but we should note that this still is, that the direction vector actually of this is still the same the coefficients that we have in front of the t cubed in each place still gives us the direction vector here. Now, to show on paper that this vector valued function traces out the same line, Let's let u be equal to t cubed. Then r of u will equal 2 plus u i plus 3 minus 2 u j plus 5 plus 4 u k. And if we took dr du, we 
we would get uh, i minus 2j plus 4k, which is the direction vector of our line and constant, it seems, at least at this point, speed with respect to u. But if instead we wanted to find dr dt, we have to use the chain rule, and we'd get dr du, which maybe I should state here, times, normal times here. Uh, maybe I should write just a normal times, because this is not quite the same thing. But times d u dt. So here we'd have the du's cancel, effectively, and dr du was i minus 2j plus 4k. We're going to multiply that by du dt, which du dt in this case is 3t squared. It's a scalar. And so when we do that, we end up with 3t squared i minus 6t squared j plus 12t squared k. And we see that's exactly what we had up here for v of t, or our prime of t for that function. So we just see that it fits the form of a line. And uh, we just sort of show that it's going to be the same thing. And it's sort of interesting to see how the chain rule works in this context as well. Now let's go ahead and look at the applet and see that this makes some sense. So here we're going to change our functions. Maybe we'll use this one. We remove that one from the picture. And let's change this one to be what we want it to be. All right, let's go ahead and um, graph this. And if we look at that, it doesn't look like the line changed at all. Um, I suppose we could change this to be smaller values. So this really could be from, uh, let's see, negative 5 to 5. If we graph this and then animate it. Let's animate that again. Notice how the motion is different here. It's very fast, slows down, stops, and then speeds up again. This is the same line being parameterized in a different way. Okay, and if you don't trust that it's the same line, of course you can uh, graph the other one back over here and just see that it's the same line as we have there being traced out over here. Animate stops and keeps going again. So just to show you that we can have motion um, that's not constant speed along a line and we can parameterize it in many different ways, I wanted to just give this example. So this is what we've just looked at. Um, highlight this in blue. So again, giving us very interesting motion along a line. All right, um, with that, I hope that this has given you some information that will help you as you complete the web work assignment and that it gives you a better sense of how to parameterize a line in various ways. Uh, please let me know when you have some questions on this material.